Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will cover how to eat to maximize muscle growth. First and foremost, we need to understand the role of nutrition for muscle growth. To understand this, we need to look at how both training and nutrition promote muscle growth in different ways. Hypertrophy training is the stimulus for growth. Without this stimulus, we simply won't grow or even maintain our muscle mass. So before even considering nutritional interventions to maximize muscle growth, we should first ensure that our training is actually providing an effective stimulus for muscle growth to occur in the first place. Nutrition simply assists these hypertrophy adaptations. It doesn't actually cause muscle growth. So ensuring that we perform effective hypertrophy training, nutrition is a way of maximizing this response to training. Now that we understand nutrition isn't an adaptation to training, let's now explore how we can eat to maximize muscle growth. The first and most important consideration for muscle growth is calorie balance. Calories are simply a unit of energy. We expend a certain amount of energy each day, and if our daily calorie consumption meets this level of expenditure, then our body weight will be maintained. However, if we eat more calories than we expend, in other words, if we are in a calorie surplus, then our body weight will increase over time. In opposition, if we eat less calories than we expend, in other words, if we are in a calorie deficit, then our body weight will decrease over time. To maximize muscle hypertrophy, we generally want to be in a calorie surplus. This doesn't mean that we need to be in a calorie surplus to see any muscle growth at all, it just means that to achieve the greatest increases in muscle mass, most people will require a calorie surplus. Untrained or detrained individuals may actually be able to maximize hypertrophy adaptations while at maintenance calories or even in a calorie deficit because the training stimulus is novel to them. However, even these individuals will probably need to enter a calorie surplus after a short while to maximize muscle growth. This research review attempted to establish whether being in a calorie surplus was in fact necessary to maximize muscle growth. While they couldn't establish any strong conclusions, they recommended that trainees should at least be in a slight energy surplus and make adjustments based on the individual's response. So we know that we should probably be in a calorie surplus to maximize muscle growth for most trainees, but how much of a surplus should we be in? This can be measured by the rate of body weight gain over time. The more weight that is gained over time, the greater the calorie surplus we are in. The rate of weight gain for maximal muscle hypertrophy is a very difficult question to answer. To be absolutely sure that a trainee is gaining muscle at the fastest rate possible, a fast rate of weight gain that is a significant calorie surplus will work. However, we know that most of the weight that will be gained will be fat mass, and only a small portion of the total weight will actually be muscle. So there is a trade-off here that the faster we gain weight, the more confident we can be that we are growing muscle, but the more fat we will also gain. This study found that athletes who trained in a calorie surplus gain the same amount of muscle mass regardless of how fast they gain weight. So athletes who ate in a greater calorie surplus grew the same amount, but gained about five times more body fat than those who ate in a very slight surplus. Since significant muscle hypertrophy takes such a long time to achieve, trainees may be better off eating in a slight surplus for a longer period of time, rather than eating in an excessive surplus for a shorter duration. This allows the trainee to consistently be in a calorie surplus for a longer duration without gaining unnecessary amounts of body fat. Weight gain at around a 0.25 to 0.5% of body weight per week is a good rough guide for muscle growth. To maximize muscle growth, this should be prolonged for at least six months to ensure adequate time for adaptation. Next, let's discuss protein intake. Protein intake simply refers to how much total protein is consumed per day. There is clear evidence in favor of higher protein intakes for maximal muscle growth. This research review suggests that protein intakes around 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day are enough to maximize muscle growth. Therefore, it is not necessary to consume more protein than this to maximize hypertrophy adaptations. Now that we know how much total protein is required to maximize muscle growth, we now need to establish how this should be distributed throughout the day. This same research review suggests that this total protein should be spread evenly across a minimum of four meals per day to maximize anabolic activity throughout the day. So as long as total daily protein intake is adequate, trainees should spread this somewhat evenly throughout the day over multiple meals to maximize muscle growth. Next, let's discuss protein timing. This refers to when exactly in the day protein should be consumed. It is a common recommendation to consume a protein shake immediately after resistance training, otherwise you miss an anabolic window of opportunity and you sacrifice muscle gains. However, this study showed that consuming a 25 gram serving of protein either before or after resistance training had equal effects on muscle growth. 
This is because when protein, or any other nutrient for that matter, is consumed, it stays in the bloodstream for several hours. So trainees should probably seek to consume a high protein meal at least a few hours before and a few hours after training to ensure there is sufficient amino acids readily available in the bloodstream. While a post-workout protein shake isn't necessary, it may be a convenient way to get a protein serving in a busy schedule. Now that we've discussed energy balance and protein intake, what about the other macronutrients? The other two macronutrients are carbohydrate and fat. Once we are in a calorie surplus and have met the required protein intake, the amount of carbohydrates and fat that we consume probably doesn't matter to any significant extent. Generally, we want to keep carbohydrates fairly high to provide enough fuel for training performance and limit fat intake. However, since we are already eating in a calorie surplus, excessive carbohydrates and even fat that we consume can be stored as glycogen. Glycogen is basically just stored carbohydrates in the muscle and liver that we can use as energy when required. So when we are in a calorie surplus, we will almost always have enough carbohydrates in the system to fuel performance. And lastly, let's cover what supplements may be of potential benefit for maximal muscle growth. It should be understood that legal supplements are the least effective nutritional intervention for hypertrophy or any other athletic endeavor. Trainees should first ensure they are training effectively, they are in a calorie surplus and are consuming adequate daily protein intake before even considering supplementation. Let's now cover a few supplements that can potentially be effective to maximize muscle hypertrophy. The first supplement that can be beneficial for muscle growth is protein powders. Protein powders are simply protein extracted from certain foods and dehydrated into a powder form. So basically they are just a concentrated form of protein from regular foods, usually dairy products. Protein powders don't necessarily have any special additional effects on muscle growth, they are simply an easy and convenient way to help trainees consume more protein per day. This meta-analysis showed that when daily protein intakes were at the upper effective limit as discussed previously, additional protein supplementation actually had no extra impact on hypertrophy gains. That being said, protein powders can be a great way of getting enough total daily protein in during a busy schedule if the trainee doesn't have enough time to prepare high protein meals. The second potentially effective supplement for muscle growth is creatine. This meta-analysis showed that older adults saw greater increases in muscle mass from resistance training when supplementing with creatine monohydrate compared with those who didn't supplement with it. Creatine supposedly increases creatine stores within the muscle, which provides more fuel for the creatine phosphate energy system. This theoretically means that anaerobic performance should be able to be sustained for a longer duration. This applies to trainees seeking maximal muscle growth because it means that we can maybe perform one to two more reps on each set or lift a slightly heavier load for the same number of reps. This can then induce greater hypertrophy adaptations since we can train harder than we otherwise would be able to. And the last supplement that can potentially be effective for muscle growth is caffeine. While I haven't seen any studies directly looking at the effects of caffeine on muscle growth, it is well established that caffeine can enhance performance of many different athletic activities. This meta-analysis showed that caffeine was able to improve power and maximal strength performance by a small amount. While this isn't a direct measure of muscle growth, it may have indirect implications. So to extrapolate these results, lifters may benefit from caffeine intake before hard training sessions as they can potentially once again improve lifting performance by a small amount. This again can induce a greater hypertrophy stimulus because trainees can simply train harder. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.